Guys, they do magic. magic. They are the magic guys. Guys, we're live. We're back. It's been a minute. We don't have any Douglas Con at the moment because he's been uh, impaired with his potatoes. So <laughs> <laughs> he'll get here. He'll figure it out. He'll figure it out. He got some new sound gear, and it sounds it sounded great though for that minute. It, it, it for like the minute that is processing unit could handle it <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah and jace especially flew to the studio for this so we could be live sure did man certainly didn't together come up here for someone's wedding or anything it was 100 percent for this podcast <laughs> thank you You're welcome. that's what i thought yeah that's what i thought so yeah so that's why we've got the uh the old school magic guy sign in the background and um it's good to see a lot of friends of uh Wes is on here once they hit 600 subs i mean <laughs> i think we're pretty close to that i think right but um is Thank West you for joining us. Is roasting us? Yeah, people are <laughs> roasting in the comments already. So this is great. Great to see everyone, We've especially... Wes yeah. Baker over here talking shit. <laughs> yeah, I love it. Everyone's just, uh, yeah, hey, Alex, hey, Trick Kid, hey, Lucas. This is great. So, Jace, tell them uh, what have you been up to, bro? Uh, yeah, so our guest today is Eric... <laughs> Eric the 365 Leclerc. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'm talking... Like your... Jason the, the 137. <laughs> Jason the 137 Ma. <laughs> yeah. So I, I'm I'm pretty curious to see to hear what he thinks of that too. Oh, that you're yeah. you know half the man he is. <laughs> <laughs> Not even that. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's true. That's true. All right. Well, uh, let's bring on our guest. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Eric Leclerc. What does that book say? Oh, hey guys. <laughs> up on, uh, I'm reading here. What's brushing up? Brushing up on a little light. <clears throat> a little light reading. <laughs> oh man, it's good to have you here. Finally, I've been asking you to come on the podcast for many, many times. And Josh asked you one time and now you're here. So it's Did good. You? <laughs> uh, yeah, Sorry, buddy. Glad, glad it all worked out. <laughs> Yeah. So tell us uh, what's been going on in the life of Eric Leclerc or introduce yourself or people might not know who you are. You um, well, I mean, those that's a lot oh. of questions. That's a lot of questions. So where, <laughs> well, I guess first off, where are you uh, situated right now? I'm in Canada. I'm in <laughs> Ottawa right now. Um, and um, I can see Wes is here. He's in Vancouver and, we, and Alex is still in his parents' house in Quebec. Right. And what uh, about the other 16 viewers? Do you know where they live as well? No, no. I think I know where okay. Tom, <laughs> Tom Nickerson is from Ottawa. Uh, Grady Jacobs is from Florida. <clears throat> I know that. Um, awesome. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I've been keeping <clears throat> busy. Um, shows are starting back up, which is nice. Uh, but man, for two years, <clears throat> as, um, um, was it ever rough? Thanks for correcting me, Wes. Um, yeah, it was rough for two years, but things are picking back up. I started a cannabis company. Oh, yeah. um, right, right before the Panny D, and uh, the old spicy well. cough. Yeah, yeah, classic, classic magic move. And then, uh, yeah, so we start tours are starting again, and um, things are things are going, man. I can't complain. Life is good. Like, how'd the cannabis company come about? That sounds like a lot of fun. Um, I always, I always like cannabis, uh, and uh, my buddy approached me a couple of years ago. He's like, um, you know, hey, do you want to? give us your life savings to invest in this. And I'm like, yeah, it sounds amazing. <laughs> sounds like a great uh, in the middle of the thing. Like, sure, Chris Angel. I'll give you yeah, a try. Right. Um, and that started, we're doing well. It's called Viridescent Botanicals. We call it Viri Botanicals. Our, our Instagram got hacked today. And I learned that there's absolutely nothing that can be done. It's just, we got to start over now. It's so stupid. Oh my God, I saw that post. And... Yeah. Like, can that, that can just happen to anyone or do you know well, where so you went wrong? It, well, I mean, what went wrong is it, let this be a public service announcement out there. Make sure you do your two, two fat, two digit factor authentication, two digit authentication in Instagram. It's an option in security settings and that really makes sure your account is safe. Do it now. I knew about it. I knew it was to be done. I was just like, ah, what are the chances? And yet, right. we are. Yeah. No we one's going to want my account. Yeah. <clears throat> Can we say shit? Yeah, you can say fuck. You can text. say it, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, come on. I'm, I'm a kids performer. Okay, that's all right. There's no kids on this one, but that's all right. Wait, how did Thomas Conger get his uh, account back? 
That's a good point. Take yeah. him a month to Man. get his account back. <clears throat> Interesting. Yeah. What's up, there you guys should talk. Yeah. <laughs> so wait, it's just... 8 a.m. for you guys right now? Yeah, 9.07 in the morning. Oh. And that's how we do the pods because for Doug, it's uh, like 7 p.m. So we try to, you know, balance it out so he's not, you know, up at 3 a.m. Pretty much. Vice versa. That's pretty much the goal. So you guys yeah. have to get up and pretend you're like, Prepare, oh, pretend we're awake. Oh, baby. Exactly. I'm always ready to say baby. <clears throat> yeah. Always. I think yeah. that's worthy of a like and share. It is worthy of a like and share. <laughs> what was that, your Australian accent? What the fuck was that? I don't know. I'm really bad at accents. <laughs> Can you say g'day, mate? G'day, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing it. thinking about it. it. <laughs> nice. Yeah, so what, what, was, what were your thoughts watching Jace attempt the 365? Man, pandemic. you're good, buddy. You're good. I thought you were going to do it. <laughs> yeah, I was. I did that one real quick. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, hey, I, I, and I'm, I'm sure you don't regret your decision. Of stopping? Yeah. Ah, uh, you know, I semi-regret it. But, you know, at the same time, yeah, it's like, I, I just got, there was a point where I got, like, really sick. Do you remember? I was, like, so sleep deprived. I was, mm. like, ruined. The eyes were red. Because, because of the work? Because of the workload. Yeah, because all the gigs came flooding back all at once. So I had all this gig gigging to do. And then at the same time, I was trying to do this. And I was oh, editing man. them all by myself as well. I didn't oh, have like man. a editor. You're bringing me back. You're bringing me yeah. back. Yeah. Bro. I was I was ruined. There was a point where it looked like someone took a shit on both my eyes. Like My eyes were like so fucking red and sore and swollen. Wow. It was crazy. That's very descriptive. That's a great analogy. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I try to keep it real. You know what I'm saying? That's that's what's involved to complete the three six five. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, a lot of uh, romantic ideas. <clears throat> Man, that was the shit was crazy, dude. I just remember like waking up and forgetting what day it was, and I'm like, "Fuck, did I make a video today?" <laughs> I start having a panic attack. Oh my god, <laughs> well, your stuff is good, man. You you really relate. What what are your numbers? What did you do? Like, what 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 did what are you at so far? And what did you do with your three sixty five? Well, I grew on other platforms. So I'm like 103k on Instagram, which is actually nice. pretty solid. Sick. And I'm like uh, 1.4 million on the TikTok. And now Facebook, I'm just about to hit 30k. Man, and so then... so even though you're a failure at the actual project, <laughs> twice, 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 why twice? <laughs> no, no, I was, gonna tried... re I was going to restart. He's the it, only but... person that tried to do it again. No, no, no. You did try. No, I didn't really try. Like you got to like day five and then you were like, hang no, on a I second. To, I this day, is not no, going to be. I got two weeks in. No, I got 20 days in. Right. And then I stopped. Yeah. Oh Crazy. shit. Sorry guys. Hold on a sec. Hello. Yeah. Hold on. I'm... That's all right. We'll fill no, I can't. Way. I can't hear. Hold on. Do you want to work? <laughs> oh my <laughs> God. This is an actual Sorry, fucking. Yeah, I got it. I got that. Hey, you need to give that phone to Doug so he can get better reception to make it on this <laughs> yeah, podcast. Yeah, that's true. Oh my god! Jeez, that was funny, bro. I didn't even. Uh, I really thought you were just getting a phone call. <laughs> no, this guy's busy. I'm a pro. I get phone calls? What what type of gigs do you are you doing at the moment? You know, you've at done. You moment, put a lot of. Um, at the moment, just schools, elementary and high schools. Um, corporate stuff a little bit, not much. I've only done two or three since things have been uh, no virtuals anymore. Uh, not almost no walk around. I just I'm. I just did like a showcase where we're probably going to book like between 70 and a hundred shows in a couple in two months, uh, in schools. Um, Oh, hi, yeah, Stephanie wow. Hart. Uh, yeah, I just booked a big tour. Uh, I don't know when it's going to be later this year, but, uh, I still love, I still love doing the kids shows, man. I, it's so special. Like I know it's like in our, in our, uh, West says private kids parties only. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and I know in our world, in our magic world, like kid shows are kind of viewed like, oh, like, you know, the lower echelon of the magic of the magicians. But I totally disagree. There's nothing more validating. There's nothing more fun. And there's nothing harder than really, um, you know, commanding you know, 500 kids and having them right under your uh, your spell. So I, I, I love doing it. I've always done it. And I'm working on a couple TV projects as well, um, which don't involve me, but I'm like kind of behind the camera. But uh, yeah, so mm. things are happening. Mm. Things are coming back. I'm pumped. That's sick. Yeah, I man. think uh, kids' magic is interesting. I, I think it's a market that I might want to try. Oh, doing, doing street shows. Well, doing street shows, I 
deal with kids a lot and kids are funny man they're so funny kids are so funny and they're like smarter than adults most of the time yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. like actually insane <laughs> and they won't just be nice because they're being like because of the etiquette right yeah like, yeah. yeah 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 it's harder to fool a child than it is an adult yeah no golf, no golf claps from the kids you know what mm. i'm saying yeah yeah <laughs> oh thanks Wes. that means a lot buddy no, he was talking to me, but yeah, oh, that's all right. sorry. Yeah, Jason, that surprises me that um, you don't you don't do kids. You have the you you have the uh, you have everything for it, man. I usually stick with like family orientated stuff, so right. I guess I I guess I inadvertently work with kids. But meaning like, like a Disney movie, yeah. you're playing for the parents. Yeah, kind the of. Yeah, there, yeah, yeah. The jokes yeah. go. Which yeah. which I've learned mm -hmm. over time is exactly what a kids party is because all the parents are hanging out with the kids anyway. Yeah, and so that's what a kid a kid's gig is, yes. and I'm like, God damn, I should just do that. And just like in in busking, it's the parents that pay you. So I guess if you're throwing jokes at the kids' parties to the adults, Bro, yes, just exactly. The, no, that's and you know what? And and when I like, I go hard. <laughs> what? My what? my shows, my my kid shows, I go hard on um on uh on the jokes for chill. Like I'm right on the borderline of being inappropriate. Right. Uh, right. But, and sometimes, so I've done this my whole entire life, like 30 years of, you know, nothing, you know, nothing sexual, not those swear words, obviously, but jokes, like kind of like in Disney movies, but out loud. Uh, right, and right. sometimes I've developed these like tactics for parents because you always get a couple Karens during a show. Ah. Like, <laughs> not, not always, maybe, maybe five times a year, you'll see a teacher or somebody go like, oh, like, and you know, like voice their opinion to somebody beside them. So I've devised these lines to make the teachers or the kids realize that like it's them, like everybody's laughing around you, ma'am, you know, or like, uh, hey, it's like a Disney movie. It has to be fun for everybody. You guys are paying. I want to come back. I'm never getting invited back here again, am I? Like those, <laughs> those kind of lines. Um, yeah, yeah, and you know, yeah. most of the time when it's, when a parent, first of all, if I'm, if I bring a kid up and I do the whole, like bringing up by the collar and pushing them and like, and if I, if I'm a little too rough with the kid, it's ne or like tell them to like quiet down, it's my show or whatever it is. It's never their parents that oh, yeah. are mad. No, no. Like, you, yeah. tell mm. them, you tell them, you tell well, them. This, well, this, this culture mad. of, uh, this culture of people these days are getting offended on behalf of other people. And that's what's so fucked up. Yeah. Yeah. It's so stupid. Great question, it Wes. I have picked up several moms. <laughs> for those for those listening Wes asked have you ever picked up a mum at a show so that might be another reason to get into kids magic is that, is that mums or mum at a show how many um, are you talking about yeah no I, I have I have a few times and it's great because they know I know they have kids that's the number one thing with moms is like well I have kids so you know they think like they're out plus, they're out of you know plus you're of, good with kids I mean <laughs> you're kids. already you're already one foot in the door one foot, yeah. I mean, yeah. Uh, yeah, and the best part is that you can give away cards, your, your cards. And you, who wants some cards? And when their kid comes up, you're like, go give this to your mom right away. Go give it to your mom. Tell her to call me. You know, like you wow. straight up send the kid to do the dirty work, you know? Nice. Love Smart. it. Love it. So <laughs> he's going to release a playbook. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you new book. single moms awesome. in your area. <laughs> Magicians actually probably need that book. How to pick up as a magician. Do yeah, kids like magic. That, that sounds hey, weird. That's another thing, you know, th let's talk about that because that's crazy. So, you know, a few years ago, Wes would know what year, but there's a book from Neil Strauss called The Game that came out. Yeah, it was yeah. a big artist book. <clears throat> yeah. And in that book, for some reason, one of his go-tos was, you know, learn magic tricks because I have something that makes you stand out. I don't know. I didn't read the book. Mm. Uh, yes, he did. But, um, <laughs> but I, I can see it on your bookshelf just there. For many years, no, this is actually not. But for many years, this one's not, uh, it's a different one. It's a cookbook. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's not that one. Um, oh, shit, that's funny. Hey, Allison. Oh What's up, Allison? Um, so, uh, anyway, so that kind of ruined magic for me doing magic in bars, like professionally, being right, hired. Because right. girls were all, they knew about this book. And they're always weary mm. of, you know, guys trying to pick. There's nothing cringier for me uh, than, you know, a guy dude really with no really personality. A girl with magic. Yeah. Uh, that's so cringe. What was that? What what show were we watching when there was literally that? <laughs> key, what was it? Keys to the keys to the castle or whatever. Keys to the VIP. Yeah, that's it. Keys to the VIP. Hey guys. 
<laughs> it was Mike Durzo. That's oh it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Bro, that guy is so goofy. <laughs> it's he hard has not to voice. love him. He's, he's got a he's got a, he's got a voice. It's hard he's not to love voice. him, bro. He's like, What's he's up, Emirat? Like, Emirat from hey, Turkey is, is watching. Who's this? Emirat, hey. I went to Turkey. Actually, I'm just I'm dropping a new YouTube video in like a couple days, which is the first one in like eight months, and it's uh, Magician Lost in Turkey, and <laughs> um, <laughs> and um, I met Emirat in Turkey. He came to you know he came to find us in Istanbul, and I just sent you a package, Emirat. I sent you a bunch of decks and. Some butt plugs and stuff. Hope you enjoy. <laughs> butt plug <and> decks. Yeah. <clears throat> nice. That's incredible. <laughs> you never send me butt plugs. It's very thoughtful, isn't it? Yeah. I just can't find your size. <laughs> <laughs> they keep falling out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We have a third, a third uh, or fourth member of this podcast. Let's see if uh, his internet is working. Hey, What's up, Robert? I don't know. What's happening, fellas? Yeah, it's working. Hey, we're hearing yeah, you. Um, things are working. Oh, my God. Bro, this conversation was on its last legs without you, man. <laughs> we need you here. <laughs> so I, was, right. uh, I, had, uh, I had friends over earlier, and she had a little, a little toddler, a three-year-old girl. And I was in my magic room just playing with all the toys. And uh, I found a trick that I used to do at magic conventions – uh, and I whipped it out, and I haven't. I've never showed this to anybody publicly. Oh boy! Uh, and this I, isn't I've that heard... one that you whipped out before, is it? Because that was <laughs> no, no. That's, that's oh, okay. I want to show you oh, one. Doug, I miss, show Doug you missed that. One, yeah. right? no, I, I saw that. Oh, yeah. I right. saw, saw that. It. I will never forget seeing that. It's um, who do we have it. here, guys? Who do we have here? Hey, is that me? What the that's fuck? That's Charles Manson, right? Okay. Oh right, right. So, um, no, it's Jesus. <laughs> Jesus. Same, 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 same. All right. If I was really Jesus, if Jesus was really here. Uh, what would he make appear? A bird. Uh, fish. Bird, a fish. Fish wine. or bread. Bread. And, yeah. And wine. Wine. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, how much does Jesus love you? Zero. About this much. Okay, that's an uh, <laughs> 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 Eric, I used, huh? I used off his uh, Easter shows. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's so good. I haven't performed that in years. I thought it would be appropriate. Yeah, it was good. I liked it. Thank perfect. You. No, that's perfect. Oh my god, <laughs> it's not a uh, it's not a good podcast unless we can upset uh, upset a few people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course, that's, what, that's mm, the main goal. That's exactly. what we're aiming for here. So. I, you know what, um, I really liked your website. I don't know if you use it or update it much, but I was looking through it yesterday. Thanks. Super, super smooth, like super smooth. And Thanks, the photos man. are great. But you don't seem to um, like put together much of a promo reel. Like considering all the TV you've done, yeah. what what was your choice not to make like a sick ass promo video or at least show like your full ass clip or, you know, any of that um, stuff? Well, that's a great question. That's the first time somebody asked me that. And I love new questions. Um, that website is about, I'll say like about 10 years old. Um, and it still mm -hmm. looks, it still looks really good for it's like parallax and said, I spent a lot of money. Yeah. Actually, this is a great story I've never told. So I wanted the best website about 10 years ago and I contacted, mm -hmm. I want local, I wanted to support local. So I, I reached out to everybody here in Ottawa and I got back a quote, uh, for the, it was the best website building team in Ottawa, it was all female. And they quoted me $10,000. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Whoa, I'm like, that is a lot, even in Canadian. And um, so <laughs> I decided to reply and to show them my, my humanity. I wrote them an email, which was, uh, it was like, okay, well, 10 grand is way too much for me. Uh, and I said, but here's what I'm proposing. If you do it for six grand, I will bake you cupcakes. I will come <laughs> do a Christmas party in your office. And to put you in a yes mood, here's a bunch of pictures of cute kittens and I just spam the email with a bunch of people. <laughs> she replied and said, I can't believe I'm saying this, but okay, you're on. Wow. So I saved $4,000 with, with a fun email, which goes to show you a lot about business and interpersonal, interpersonal skills, soft skills. Goes so I just learned that expression, by the way, soft skills a couple soft days skills. ago. Um, I, I just learned that, and I'm going to use it all the time. But anyways, I learned having you know being relatable like that is so much more important and again that translates to being a magician right if they like you they'll like what you do so anyway so i got the website done um and um i didn't have 
you know, I didn't, it was 10 years ago. So I, I, I didn't, I think I had brain games. I don't think I had tricked. I didn't have tricked or brain games or any, I had TV credits, but nothing, you know, uh, and then they built it. And then I just lost the password for it. I just can't update it now. I don't know what I'm doing with it. <laughs> I, and, and I thought, I thought Josh, uh, you were, you were going to ask me, um, why is there no kid stuff on it? Uh, and that's something I've always really tried to keep separate was my name, Eric LeClaire, is for adults. And my kids' performer is always, you know, Mr. E or Mysteric in French. I always try to really differentiate um, the characters because I am, you know, ruthless in my adult shows. And I can't, <clears throat> I really thought at one point in my career, I'm like, is this going to hurt me? My agents were, my kids' agents were freaking out. They were like, you can't say shit and you can't, I'm doing my Leclerc show and they're losing their minds with mm. all the films they're putting out there. Um, so, um, yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm about to do something with the site. Um, or, I'm, I don't know what, but it just doesn't represent me. Do you enough. have a site for your children, uh, children's style? Internet? I do in yeah. French, but they're very, very specific to the market I'm in. Okay. They're like for school teachers, showing them why it's educational and right. you know a little bit of videos. I do one promo video every two or three years in French. Um, but besides that, no, I don't. So I'm stepping right. in late here, but I'm surprised to hear the uh, children's entertainment is a part of your uh, livelihood or life. Is this a big <laughs> portion of your professional uh, life? Yeah, I'd yeah. say, yeah, I'd say it used to be, you know, 70%. Now it's maybe I'd say 50% because of all the TV stuff and all the TV yeah. stuff I'm doing is not with kids. It's for adults. Right. But my live shows. Oh well, yeah. I'll, I say my, my live shows, it would be, it would be maybe, yeah, 50, 60, maybe even 70% of all schools, schools, high school, teens. I put teens in there as well. Okay. Um, but uh, yeah, so elementary school, I dress up as a character and for teens, I'm just normal, uh, but still, you know, I err on the, uh, on the side of, uh, of precautions. I, I take, sure. I take precautions not to upset anybody, even though it's hard for me. <laughs> yeah. It's I'm hard right hard now. To yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that's why we'll keep this separate from the, yeah, uh, the French, right. the French way. I saw one of your stories go up and you were doing a show in French and I was, that's the first time it really hit me that of course you would know French being in Canada, but yeah. like, yeah, God damn. well, not everybody here, uh, not everybody here <laughs> knows French and we're, I'm in a bilingual city. Um, Wes is actually trying to learn French, but, uh, like I, uh, our ghetto French, like Alex, is, the French that Alex speaks, He's actually, Alex speaks better English than French. And that's wow. Real. Yes, yes. He could be understood with his English more universally than he could be understood with his French universally. But he has such a French accent. Accident. <laughs> wow. Oh, he's screwed. Yeah. Crazy. <laughs> <clears throat> wow. I remember going to Toronto like 10 years ago and, and everyone would address you, say hello in French first, and then they would switch to English. Really? And realize you're an idiot. Yeah. Really? Oh, no, no, was it was it Toronto? No, it was um, what's the other city that Ontario. is is bilingual? Montreal. Montreal that's where yeah, I was. Yeah, 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 yeah. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah. That's where I heard. That's where I heard my first gunshot. Everyone. No. Mon Montreal. Yeah. <laughs> that's really surprising. It was like it was like two a.m. On, on like a Saturday oh, night. Oh, two a.m. Okay, got it, got it. I was literally uh literally hanging out with someone at Marek's wedding, who was a uh, who had French Canadian history. Have you heard about like the, they not allowed to speak English, otherwise they get punished and stuff like that? No. It's like, you know, the French, like French Canadian upbringing where they like, they have like, uh, like pretty much compelled speech laws where it's like, you can speak French only, but if you, if they hear you speaking English, you get punished like to 10 years and all this. Like, that was my childhood. Yeah. Wow. Oh, that was you. So you went through this as well. Yeah. That's, uh, that's some <laughs> crazy shit. Cool. So here's the reason is that we are, you know, we're a French, French community. Uh, right. And we're losing our language because everything's in English around us. So mm, okay. in elementary school, we're not allowed to speak English. English class, fine, whatever. But in the hallways and at recess, if, if they hear you speak English, they shoot you in the back of the school. They bring you in the back of the school and they shoot you right in the leg. <laughs> um, no, but it, it, so when I'm touring, this is, this is so crazy. When I, when I tour, they don't shoot you in the back. They beat you with the... <laughs> Josh believed you for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> um, they, uh, so when I do my school tours in the French schools, it is imperative that I do not say an English word. I can't even say whatever, even though we say whatever in French all the time. 
can't say it. It has to be all it has to be all English all the time. Wow. All, all French all the time. All French all the time. Yeah, Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> he goes in there just immediately ruins it. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, uh, yeah, it's kind of crazy. Yeah, even on like a playground, right? If a teacher walks past and hears you talking with your friends in English, you get so, punished. So what does that mean like percentage-wise of work? How much English shows are you doing compared to French shows? I'm, you know, I'm coming just... back to like the, the shows that I do. I'm really lucky. I'm bilingual. I do kid, I do kid shows, adult shows, TV stuff, corporate. Like, so I do it. I do it close up stage. I do it all. So I'm really lucky. What uh, do you enjoy doing? <clears throat> There's nothing. Uh, I mean, I hated virtual shows. I know Mostly what I hate. Mental die. I hated <laughs> virtual shows. Um, I, I don't, it, there's nothing like see doing a, my my kid show so tight. Even though I do it, I do a new one every year. It's so tight. I know we're gonna have fun. I know we're gonna laugh. I know the parents are gonna be impressed. I know it's gonna go so well. And uh, there's nothing like taking control over you know a corporate crowd of 500 people as well. So I don't know. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're, it, I guess I'm more relaxed backstage before a kid show, but it's more validating after when you just nail after that first trick at a corporate show or at an adult show, it, like you, things are going well. And like, and it's nice to see kids always love a magician. Adults don't. So right. you're trying to mm. fight the stereotypical image of what adults yep. you know, uh, think of what magic is. So that's kind of fun to do. I've, I've always said in my career, Every time I approach a group or I'm in front of a group, I always want to leave the group and like to crush the stereotype of like magic is like corny or boring or redundant or all the same or embarrassing. You know, I just want to have a good time. And, and I do that by not taking myself too seriously and just having fun with them. Yes, indeed. So naturally you perform double crossed and then you do here and there. Buddy. <laughs> SpongeBob. I, no, I watch... I don't watch subscribe Eric's. to that. I don't subscribe to that, Jason. I do double cross. I love it so much. I don't think that people. I think that magicians think that laymen see more magic. We're in. We're like bombarded with magic in front of our yeah. eyes, right? Um, all day, every day. Like most people will die without seeing magic in front of them. So mm -hmm. I never really subscribe to the like. I think like it's a magic a magic club thing. Oh, you do. Where you're gonna show us a show us your ambitious card or whatever? Like, they're classics for a reason. There's a reason why Double Cross is the number one selling. Like this guy, this guy must make so much money. It's such a good trick. And it's you know, I, trick. <laughs> uh, yeah. And I've never also I've never been worried about. You know, a, a big thing on magic forums is like, what do you do if people uh, go want to Google <laughs> your tricks? And I'm like, what? Fucking let him. Somebody's zipping out their phone. I'm like, oh, what my magic trick with the X on the hand? Like, that means you're rubbing them the wrong way. That means there's something yeah. you're doing that they don't yeah. like. You're challenging what them. You're doing. Yeah. You're yeah. challenging yeah. their intelligence and they yes, don't like exactly. that. Yeah. And you know Instead what? of that it being a moment, it's supposed to, yeah. Instead yes. of it being that a moment, you're. That could be as small as like an, an eyebrow raise or a chest puff too much, or like yeah. just like you're focusing on his girlfriend too much, like an asshole. Um, mm. Yeah, it's all people like, skills, man. It's like that weird of like lording superiority because you know a fucking magic trick. You know? like, <clears throat> mm. I know yeah. how to do a card trick, therefore I'm smart. Hey, what's up, Tiago? Yeah. Uh, okay, I got a question from Tiago here. He says, Eric, what's my go-to trick? So my go-to trick has always been a uh, $100 bill switch, which I always have on me. Beautiful. But because mm. I'm in, and then get them to say the 100, that's my favorite part. Just get them. What do you want me to do with this? Anything in the world. And like, like the Michael Lamar thing, you know, you get them to say it. Uh, but my go-to trick, and the, the trick that's really changed me in the last like five years is any card. Uh, and uh, oh. I have this in my kitchen. I keep it in this. Um, <laughs> this, is this is Richard Sanders, right? Yeah, man. It is yeah. so, it's better than the invisible deck. You think uh, so, huh? Wow. It is better, I think it it's is fucking better awesome. than the invisible deck. <laughs> that's a good mm -hmm. only, only thing, the only reason why, why, why I would, um, I would say, it isn't is the reset which is like yeah wow. six seconds instead of one mm. uh but it's got a presentation built into it you say what you, you know you do what you say you say oh, i know you picked an ace right they're like nah, no it's got that like sucker thing in there and then you show the aces face up and it's written on the back and i've devised and it, you know it's a kitchen trick i leave it in my drawer in my kitchen that's the trick i do when people come over and it's actually sparked my interest in performing for strangers again it is a one trick deck and i will bring it out with me 
and do it and be like, no, it's the only trick. Well, you know, now you know. So I devised this little line to say afterwards. So after the card is like, you know, after the four of clubs, you're like, the only downfall about this trick is you can only do it once, right? Because you know what card is. Like right now you could say like two of mm -hmm. diamonds and, you know, just mess up the trick, you know? So I say that. So that makes them, that makes them realize like, wait, how did he make me say four of hearts? You know, I just love it. And also another reason why I love it is because you're not sure it works all the time. So as you're dealing the cards in their hand, mm. there's no way of knowing if you nailed it. So uh. you're kind of discovering your revelation at that. So it kind of keeps you on your toes. So that was been a game changer uh, for me, 100%. That's crazy. Yeah. This, all the sales on Penguin Magic just went for that yeah, trick. Let's, uh, let's direct people. Boy Richard Sanders, am I right? Yeah, go buy yeah. it from Richard Sanders' side if you're going to buy it. That's, Support the creator. Just on, a, just on a side note, well, he started putting out reels and stuff, and they were doing really well. Yeah, Richard uh, Sanders, he's a beast. Mm. Dude, he he's, a, he's a machine, right? He, yeah. Um, he, was, he was messaging me mm. about it, and I was like, mm. bro, just do that winning personality of yours, and you'll be yep. fine. And then, yeah. then yeah. he uploaded yeah. the coin routine, which still, to this day, fucks my eyes. Yeah, four-card <laughs> four crunch. Four-card crunch, so good. Um, <laughs> you know, and, you know, he, like, kind of stepped back a little bit uh, pre-pandemic, pre-panny. Um, just, um, you know, he's just not doing anything. And then when he came back out, he just, with all these reels and all these, he's so good. He so is. good. And to your testament too, I remember, how long ago was your at the table lecture? Like five years back, eight years back? Yeah, that's, yeah, seven years back. I like think. it's still so relevant because, you know, now you're doing any card, but back then you were explaining how you would use invisible deck and you'd have it in like your vest and you'd, you know, switch to normal right. stuff and you just flow and no one would have an, any idea that you were using like, you know, this, this deck that you can only use once or whatever. Right. Yeah. Um, the pocket management is a big pocket real estate as a walk around performer mm. is a huge topic. And I always thought, I always thought the invisible, I mean, I still do. It's the greatest. I mean, you can't, you know, you can't you hear that Josh. It's the greatest. You don't like it. Josh? <laughs> Available at conjure.com. No, Doug sells them on his website. That's but look, so, beyond also that, Josh doesn't look, like it. That's irrelevant. Also Josh doesn't it's, like it. Be honest. Josh. No, okay, look, I'll, the greatest. It's the greatest. I'll just inject. My inject for two seconds is only I love the trick and I think it gets such a crazy reaction to where I don't feel like, I just feel like I want to, so I'm not, so I'm always in the moment at a gig. I just make myself do harder stuff just so personally I'm like uh -huh. in it a bit more. So I'd, I'll do like mnemonicosis with a card named or whatever, but just, it's only for me right, really. So I enjoy myself a bit more, but it's so um, strong. Uh, Alex actually <clears throat> blew my mind the other day or last year when I realized that he didn't know, he doesn't know the formula, the, the math to do for the cards. He just <laughs> he just does it like this and just looks yeah. for the card. And he mm. doesn't yeah, that is exactly how I do it too. <laughs> I do that's, that too. that's crazy to me, man. And I'm wow. bad at math too. Like I, I'm really bad at math, but uh, it's, it's so crazy to me because it adds so much when the card is face down, I think. Look, I, I agree. Like, so you're looking at the card. But if all the I, I keep the deck in the order it comes from the manufacturer and I've got it. It's like memorized to me now. So when someone says the card, mm. I can visualize where it is in the spread. It's not even math now, right? It's just going where it is. I have all, Go ahead, sir. They're staggered. Every other card is, uh, you know, like a, the, there's a pattern which is never recognized, oddly enough. If you leave it where it comes out of the box, it gives you a clue where the cards are and you can keep them in that order Really? I'm living proof. I've done it for 30 years. So, so basically you're doing stack work, but with an invisible deck. Kind of. <laughs> yeah. I'm not, it's not as much about the math or looking. It's just knowing where the card is, you know, mm -hmm. so you've been doing invisible deck for as long as I've been alive. Yeah. Probably <laughs> longer. You know, I mean, I would, yeah. Right? <laughs> this, this is well, a good well, question. When did that trick come out, Doug? So invisible deck. Ultra that's mental gonna, deck. That's correct. Yeah. And that's, I think, Burling Hole. And if I had to pick a date, I'm going to go 1913. But I'm oh, guessing. How old were you then? Yeah, three. <laughs> I was three. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Yeah. So back then, the cards were actually made <laughs> of granite. And, you know, rough and smooth wow. was a whole different process. <laughs> <laughs> like that book that uh, Eric showed us earlier. That's right. Yeah. You got his um, chisel and hammer to crack it open. Oh, that's that's a fun uh, question here. How has comedy influenced your magic along the years? How have they evolved? Um, I, you know, I've always kind of, I've never, never in my in my promotional stuff do I write comedy. 
I don't write comedy magician, even though I do my, my show, I get maybe two or three laughs a minute, which is high. Um, but I've never, ever, I just see it as a bonus. And um, how has it evolved? I mean, I've always, I've, I, I don't know. I, I've, I, comedy magic has always been like a, a, a hand in hand for me. I'm like, of course they're going to be funny. Uh, why wouldn't you be? And also it, it helped with the, the tension and relaxation for misdirection so much. Yes. Um, you, you say a joke and then you can do it. You can do anything you shoe off. They won't notice. Mm-hmm. Um, how has it evolved? I mean, uh, I, I still use the same, the same jokes for kids shows, adult shows. I like to evolve with the times, but here's something interesting is that even though I get, you know, two or three laughs a minute, um, I am petrified of stand up comedy. Uh, I would never, I went up once in Australia, actually, in New Zealand with Wes. He forced me to do it. And I had to. That's a different country, but anyway. It, yeah. Well, <laughs> you guys sound the same. Um, <laughs> you guys are both down there. I don't, I'm bad at this. Well, you sound American, so. You're right. <laughs> well, you, know, you know what's funny? I actually, when I was in New Zealand, I got <clears> in a drunken, not fight, but argument with a guy. And he's like, you sound so ghetto. You sound like a hick. He's like, you know that guy in The Simpsons, the like the, the slack jaw yoker, like, hey, I'm like, bro, it's pain. You sound the exact same to me. So we're just there, like dissing each other's like dialect and inflections, and um, yeah, it was crazy. You guys really <laughs> sound like hicks. And Clint like, is the slack jaw yoker. Was this, the, was this <laughs> the buck the bucks night you were you made a vlog of? Yeah. Was that the New Zealand trip? Yeah. This guy Jesus. and I did not get along. Let me tell you. Did yeah. you meet Brendan Dooley then as well? I did. Yeah, he picked me up from the airport. He brought me. He's great. Nice. Yeah, we yeah. just saw him. Yeah, yeah we the just saw week. him. Yeah, it was, it was good. He's doing well. You know who I don't <laughs> like is that Christopher Blaine guy. Who the fuck that is? Ah, I told <laughs> you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Christopher Wayne is his name. Um, oh, oh, he changed yeah. his name to Blaine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Idiot. You know, Spidey, Spidey messaged me about that. He's just like, hey, classic, someone stealing a show title, calling himself Christopher Blaine. That's yeah. like if you called a yourself Jason stole- Copperfield. <laughs> what did he do with these? So he stole Blaine's last name. No. He stole the Naked Magicians thing. And then he stole our whoa, name, whoa. Energy. Stole like, the Naked Magicians thing? What did he do with Naked Magicians? He, he is the Naked well, they, Magicians. Yeah, they, yeah, <laughs> they, 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 they came could. up with that show and there was a headline in Vegas and everything, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. I thought they stole that from. Uh... No, no, that's theirs. So, so there was oh, a. They are... the original. Great. <laughs> <laughs> they are the naked magicians. Yeah, Mike Tyler nice. and Christopher nice. Wayne. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Um, as for the big trick energy thing, he Josh was saying. Well, you can tell him. You can. Yeah. So yeah. Chris, so Chris lives in our city as well. Good nice. friends. He's producing the show that uh that I'm currently touring with. But um. Oh he, great! He's a good friend. He, yeah coming on your podcast dissing your friends no no it's good it's good we you know he, he would fine, actually dude. everyone's entitled to an opinion chris is like the most <laughs> open to criticism ever so he would he would actually probably love being on here with you as well but in the best way but he um no no and, and i without a word of a lie he mentioned that name to me as a show title back when they were coming up with the naked magicians nice so like it's a name that he's been thinking of but just never put it to action Nice. And then um, tell him the full story. <laughs> well, like, can can we clarify this here? Is is Chris is Chris producing a show? Big Trick Energy for one. So he's doing the Brisbane Comedy Festival, and his one night show for one night is called Big Trick oh. Energy. Okay. Then. And right. once he announced it, then we were like, "Hey, man, just so you know, like, there's a touring show. Well, a, you know, a touring show and, and a and a Netflix show called that. And um, you know, he's a cool guy. So he was like, well." There's two things that could happen. One is like they won't care because it's just one night in Brisbane. Or two, they'll send me a cease and desist and I can use it for publicity. So either yeah. all, all you know, right. it's it's good. <laughs> <laughs> Eric appreciates it. no bad hope, press. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. Hope that, I hope that his show goes as well as our show. <laughs> <laughs> so not at all. <laughs> oh, uh, man. Didn't you guys like uh, not sell out? <laughs> Incredible. Is that oh, something man. you can touch on, or you just you were just kind of like ah yeah we'll just move on? Um, no, no, I'd love to touch on it. It's give, it's a great uh, I mean <clears throat> it's a great lesson to to everybody <clears throat> out there to all the magicians who you know who who dream of having their own TV shows um, of how you know you're you're not you're not in charge you're not you're nothing you're you're an employee 
Um, mm. You know, um, here's how I describe it. So obviously, you know, us, we've seen all the magic shows. We know we like, you know, we, we know the shows we like. Can you name another magic show you don't like? Like, like when say people like when people talk about Chris Angel, you love him or hate him, but like you can tell it was a good show. Like he was a good, you know, he was at big illusions. It made sense. You love him or hate him. He's kind of weird, but like you watch him. I want to watch. It was the new stuff happening. I was like, oh, how'd they do that? Oh, right. The new, whatever. So every show, there was something, you know, good about it. Um, so here's how I describe it. So every, every night for three months, me and my three best friends in magic were filming the show. We would go back to our hotel room and party because we were like, yo, this is going to be the most sickest show. This is unheard of. These tricks. Oh man, it's so good. It's like a new concept in magic. Never been seen high-fiving each other, thinking it was going to be amazing. And then when it aired, I remember watching it and using my tears for lube. And <laughs> I, I, I texted them in the group chat and I was like, you know what? You guys are like my three favorite people in the world, but watching you guys on TV, I wouldn't want to hang out with you. I just, <laughs> wow. we got, you know, we got, it was, it was, it was, a, it was fun to do great experience. Um, the corporate editing people. Um, yeah. Wes is right. They wanted to quit. They wanted to cut out Alex uh, for season two. So we said, no, we're just going to quit instead. Uh, uh, no. So yeah, so that's, we were celebrating our accomplishments every night. And when it came out, you know, they, they, they thought they, here's in another, they thought they knew more about magic on television than four magicians with like, you know, 80 years of combined experience. So and once it's it, shot, it goes to the editor and you're just out of the loop. Is that the situation? Kind of, you know, they send you rough cuts and then mm -hmm. they ignore, they ignore a lot of the things, but you know what? It, it, it really was kind of our fault because as this was developing and they were like, Oh no, the network wants like a storyline throughout the episode. We're like, well, oh, it's going to be corny. Mm. It's not going to be good. Like, no, we want, you guys are our stars. We want to learn about you. Let's like, let's have a day where we go like taste whiskey and do something for Chris's birthday. And I personally saw it right away. And we all did. We all did. But we're like, hey, let's just, let's just do it. Like maybe we're, they know their audience, you know, they know we should have, uh, we should have had an, a magician in the edit suite. We should have, you know, stood firm on saying we're not doing this if there's, you know, we called it like a story arc in the thing. But, you know, I, I, there's still some good stuff in there. And another thing was it's still during COVID, right? So we lose. That's a big thing. That's like mm, that's a major effect. undertaking, right? Unfathomable. Everybody had to be tested. Mm -hmm. Anybody that was on camera had to be pre-tested. Mm -hmm. So think about that, trying to do magic unsuspectingly to people. It, you know, it, they knew and they knew yeah. they were going to be on TV. Some didn't know it was going to be a magic show, but they just knew. And then in their little actor minds or being on TV mind, if they go like, whoa, <laughs> cool. <laughs> like, you're like, because they really want their clip to be on there. Yeah. But all this to say, we had amazing magic consultants. Daniel Garcia, Rico de la Vega, and Marcus Eddy were consultants. They crushed it. They said it was the most challenging show they've ever done. Out of wow. like 50 wow. magic shows. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, you know, it was a good experience. I know Wes right now is freaking out because I'm bad-mouthing the show and he hates it. He loves it. He, he wants <laughs> like, you should stop. Why are you, why are you, what's the advantage of doing that? Why are you, why would you bad-mouth it? But I'm like, hey, it's a show for magicians. We, it is what it is. And, you know, if Alex wouldn't have been there, maybe it would have been a success. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the wise words. And then magicians, when came, yeah, when magicians it, when it came, opinion. Go ahead, Josh, go. I'm done. When, when it came to the tour, um, that just did you guys have control of that, or was that a similar thing? Like, because you used the name, like they wanted to. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> so these, you know, these people came in and they were like, "Oh, well, let's we'll send you tours up in Canada." When, while it was an American show, and they booked like, you know, arenas, like thousands of people. It was just, it was just from day one uh, a crazy, crazy shit show. But Chris and Wes are going, uh, doing their own like podcast tour. Um, Wes is such a, is such a grinder. He, he called all the theaters and just stole our dates. Uh, no, he replaced <laughs> the dates. Wes Did you do host. any shows? Did that stage experience happen once even? It did not. Ha it happened once on the actual show where we mm -hmm. performed in front of a crowd, mm -hmm. but it didn't, we didn't, we didn't make it, uh, oh, that's a it. shame. Oh, Wes says you can badmouth it here. Just not to random people. <laughs> <laughs> 
Just not yeah. to people who are going to see it. <laughs> <laughs> so as I was interrupting Josh, I was wondering of the uh, kind of the uh, ratings, the perception of uh, the public, not just magicians, because who cares what they think? What did the how was it received by the public? Um, it how was many rotten tomatoes did you get? Yeah, that kind uh, of thing. I mean, we got killed on Reddit, but um, hmm. it it was it went it went well. We had the biggest opening day like the biggest uh, season pre uh, episode premiere we're the biggest premiere in i think the history of the true tv nice. That's and then strong. Kind of went down from there we people people liked people liked it they liked us um and uh yeah it did okay it did it did okay it just didn't do what they put in a lot of like we had billboards in la they mm. put in a wow. lot of money i see uh, for promo right. shows, an expensive show, especially with COVID, they had to fly in the crew from the United States to Canada and have them quarantine for two weeks in hotels. Oh my god! Wow. We yeah, so you know it was a big, 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 big yeah, money. That's yeah. huge. Yeah, it's the second highest ratings on True TV since Impractical Jokers in ten years. There you go. Testify, Wes. Yeah, you should get Wes on this podcast. Yeah, come on, Wes. It's not like we um, haven't we, tried. We offered, but... <laughs> Wes well, said he won't do it. Podcast guy. He runs out of... Wes is too rich and famous for us little peasants. <clears throat> yeah. We just we just take the B grades instead. That's right. I'll, I'll be I'll do it anytime, boys. <laughs> hey, you would... You off air, you were alluding to something about uh, kids magic or kids yeah. magicians. Um, do you want to tell us a bit about that on the now that we're now that we're live? What was I saying? I forget about the there's different places for people and magic. Oh yeah, uh, yeah untouched markets. Yeah, yeah. So Copperfield and I think Michael Weber were having a talk about what is the next big thing for magic, or what what places for stardom are left in the magic kind of world in the, in the entertainment world, and there's no female magician there are we know them but the general public would be like oh maybe they'll see like jen kramer in vegas or whatever but that doesn't like somebody like super famous uh, so female magician a children's magician there's no international children's magician that everybody knows that's the magic guy right now mm -hmm. and the third one which i forget and i hope somebody in the chat reminds me um Oh yeah, that's a great story. Michelle, Michelle Luat is here. Michelle, you must know this. Um, so there's a, no kids magician, no female magician, and no. Ah, oh, I don't. It bugs me because I've said this anecdote a lot. What do we got there? I think we got the uh, the six hundred subs for Wes to come on. Fuck it. <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> that's right. Wes, strap on. <laughs> Oh, that's so funny. Um, <clears throat> I, I'd like, so Michelle, you right here. Yeah, this I, I got a story for you guys I've never told, and Michelle just reminded me here. So um, one time I was hosting a gala. This is so bad. This is so bad. I was hosting a, gala. <laughs> I was hosting a magic gala. <clears throat> and uh, look at Wes. He's such a grinder. He's trying to get booked on my time here. Look, I'm in. <laughs> get your own shit, bro. <laughs> Uh, um, well, I was hosting a gala with all these magicians and <clears throat> I was drinking between every act, but I was making it, I was making it uh, uh, obvious, telling the crowd that I'm having a beer between acts and I was coming out half naked and whatever. So <clears throat> one time I got a kid to come up and the kid was there and I did a trick with him and I had a confetti cannon, like a big confetti cannon, but it was made out of cardboard. I paid like, you know, 20 bucks for it at a... At a um, at a uh, at a, a what a party mart or gift shop, whatever, and I just decided to set it off in on the kid right right in his face. <laughs> I don't know why <clears throat> I wasn't standing far enough. I don't know. I was like, it can't be like it's just wind. There's not, nothing comes out of it, right? It's just wind. Like, this is the okay. So this is oh the, my god. Okay. Wow. So, Let me zoom in here. Point blank to the face. Oh my <laughs> god! So, uh, you can't see, but <laughs> his glasses kid, are flying. Yes, yes. So the kid was oh, wow. Okay. Uh, so I and everybody knows I've had a few drinks. Like I don't usually drink on stage. It's just so somebody said something 
I'm like something I said about a shot and somebody's like, you want one? And I'm like, yeah. And then like, they were giving me drinks during my interventions between the, 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 <laughs> I'm like, everybody knows I'm like, how to not have a few in me. And I just go, pow, and, go, Boom! and then like, I laugh so much. And then the kid, and then there's confetti, there's a lot of confetti. And then he's like, and I look at the kid and I'm like, I'm like, did you have glasses? He's like, yeah. I'm like, don't move, don't move, because it's confetti through uh-huh. there. Well, there I'm, I'm on my, 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 my hands and, and knees on the stage <laughs> trying to look at this kid's glasses. I give it to him, and the kid got so he was he wasn't hurt. He was just boom traumatized. Yeah. And, he <laughs> and you know kids are weird. You never know when they. So we went back to his mom, and sure they enough, they grow up with a general sadness inside. <laughs> that's right. So he was sitting in the front row. And he was just like, and his mom was like, oh, she was like, he wasn't crying, but she was like, it's okay, it's okay, right? He was like eight years old too, like, grow up, kid. Yeah, and old he, enough to get <laughs> shot in the face at point blank range, I think. Him, but it took all the attention away because he's in the front row, so everybody's looking at them. And I'm like, oh, he's no. fine, he's fine. And then, I, you know, I, I gave him a little uh, toy, a hand job or whatever. And then, um, <laughs> and then oh, what? Oh, what? A little toy, like a, like a hand a hand. A hand <laughs> Like a, like a okay, you said a hand job, and I was he like, knows, oh. he knows, he knows what he said. <laughs> He's talking about one of these. It's like one of these. That's right, Alex Lamb. Sad kids make great magicians. <laughs> <laughs> oh, circle of life, Jason. Oh, 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 that's funny. You should have just fired a second cannon off to get the. <laughs> Straight yeah. into the mother's face, just I to take the focus so, off him. So so bad, and and also that night I was presenting one of my idols, one of the man's, one of the men who really got me into magic. His name is Alain Choquette. I don't know if you guys know him. Yeah. Uh, he was one of World Race Magic back in the days, a Quebec magician. And I was, you know, I was like, okay, now it's time to like bond, rebond with the audience. I had built my trust with them. My and then the kid thing kind of ruined it. But at the end, I, I, uh, I presenting this man, I give a nice, nice big speech. His name is Alain. Uh, backwards is Niala. And my kid magician, my kid, my name, my name as a magician as a kid was Niala, named after him. So I say this super emotional, you know, introduction to him. Like this next guy, I was named after him as a kid. I went to see all the shows as a kid. And then please welcome Alain Choquette. He comes up. And he's like, he tells the audience, he's like, that's not true. Why would he, why would he say that? I have no idea why, why we would say that. It's all bullshit. What? <laughs> and I was like, oh. I was rush. It was a bad night in St. CSA. <laughs> wow. Did he really just dish you like that? Yeah, and was, I don't know why. Maybe he made him feel old or whatever. But yeah, he was oh. just, he was like, I don't know what he's talking about. And he wasn't like, I don't know what that guy's talking about. <laughs> He's like, I don't know. I don't know what that, what was that? I don't need, that's not yeah. true. Like it was I, really bad. I was uh, like, I feel like this big. I was uh, so hoping that story ended with him blasting you in the face with an even bigger <laughs> confetti lodger. <laughs> you know what? That should have been the gag. Yeah, it should have been. Yeah, I agree. Jeez. Well, I think we know why the tour was canceled. Alain Chiquette still has pulse. Is he still alive? Is Alain Chiquette still? Actually, I just went to see his show on um, on. uh, Oh, last Monday. Yeah, it was Monday. Yeah, it was. (laughs) (laughs) This is what I do with my free time. I have a lot of time on the weekends. That's awesome. (laughs) And it floats too. Uh, yeah, maybe. Uh, yeah, just, I, I, he's still alive, still kicking it. Uh, I think it's his farewell tour. Oh, yeah, that's right. Nice, Doug. Yeah, yeah, you're right. It's floating up. Uh, uh, man, that's good. I love that. Um, I'm going to use that. That's so good. That makes you're total welcome. sense, Doug. Wow, that's my prop. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, yeah, I saw him, and it was he's like a master of taking, like, um, like close-up tricks and presenting it, like, making them huge without yeah. necessarily a screen. So it was like really he, good. He did he did a good show. He really did a good show. He was renowned as like the David Copperfield of Canada in his day. Yeah. Correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's yeah. Alex is Boyer's uh, good good pen pal and his idol. He's like he's like uh, Alex and I's, you know, idol growing up for sure. He changed our he changed the face of magic for us for nice. sure. We owe him a lot. Yeah, I can recall him doing Gypsy Thread maybe as a closer on stage. Is that correct? So, yeah, it's exactly think, what you're I talking think, about, taking these yeah. little moments and blowing them up. Yeah, yeah. I, I think he did on World's Greatest Magic, uh, yeah, the Gypsy yeah, yeah. Thread to a poem. Um, mm-hmm. 
the glow is the first time I saw the glow in the dark uh, thread. Yeah, good good memory, Doug. I have I have that for magic. Doug, if I have if anything, anything, I have that. Yeah, great memory. Doug, you're killing it, man. You're doing. You're, it's very interesting to see. I, I just see you everywhere, man. Isn't that yeah, crazy? I, I am grinding. I'm doing it's, the thing, man. Like what? What? I'm sure you've you've repeated this many times, but like, at what point were you like, all right, I gotta like do TikTok or like I gotta get on the social media bandwidth train? I made the decision to go all in the day after Donald Trump was unable to squash TikTok in this country. He taught he tried to, uh, you know, ban it in the United States, and I I got a small bit of momentum going on the platform. The day after he gave up, I bought Conjure.com, decided to start a side business with the efforts, and I've been all in ever since, and I still wake up every day enthusiastic about it two oh, years man, later. That, that is, and you know what? That, that I'd like to take a moment to talk about um, my most important conversation about magic that I've had. Uh, it was in 2019. I it was with Ron Pink from L.A., and we were in the Foo Fighters recording studio, which is Ron's place. And a bunch of magicians were there. There's Franco Pascali was there, uh, Boyer, all the, all the YouTube guys. And, yeah. and Ron and I were a little bit older. And we were talking about, we were talking about, oh, we're talking about how crazy it is that like Instagram magic now is like, fucking bullshit and black art and like you know this bullshit and and the camera has to be there and it doesn't matter people people are flashing it doesn't matter people are you know uh, you know what i mean the new state of magic and he yep. said to me he said to me the most dangerous thing one can do is be bitter about the advancements <laughs> of your art because if you don't adapt and accept the new developments and the new trends and what people want to see, you're just going to be sound old and bitter and you're going to be left behind and become irrelevant. Now, this could be anything from, oh, well, you can't do that in person compared to, um, you know, oh, well, there's gimmicks or like, um, <laughs> oh, I saw him flash. Well, you know what? This video where he flashed, maybe a flash is not a good example, but you know what? When he does, when somebody does like a trick where you know it's like angles and like it feels like this, it doesn't work. It's like this, like, that guy can't do it in front of me. Like, oh, and it, you just sound so bitter and so negative and so pessimistic that you're going to be mm. left behind and it's going to take over your mental health. And by the way, I, I'm, mm. I'm guilty at it too. Like I, after social media came out and really started pumping videos and I saw magic blew me away. And still every day now I see like, what the hell is going on there? A new concept with like these black shirts and all that bullshit. And that, <laughs> like it or not, it does affect your drive. I was like, okay, well, I can't, I'm going to stop posting shit because I can't compete anymore with my sleight of mm. hand, and I, you know? Um, so it, it was such an important conversation to have. And it really did change my outlook on, and you know, the, the videos that get the views are like, hey, it's for a reason. You know, all these like, reveal, even the reveal videos, like, I guess like the reveal videos are a different kind of thing, but it's still. I hate. I don't like the reveal videos, but Ugh. I um I will say we we talk about this a lot on the podcast. This comes mm. up often. Josh is uh not the biggest advocate of like short form magic online, especially from people like Sean does magic, yeah, and stuff like that. What are you talking I mean, about? Oh know, yeah, him, yeah. Yes. I, I could pull up. I get it, videos. Josh. I get it. I get it, man. <laughs> yeah. I um I on the other hand I'm like uh, if people are if more eyes are turning to magic it's only good for the art form even if they are doing those stupid exposed videos because none of them are like if you ever watch them really they're not like exposing anything too important it's just kind of like silly stuff that they come up with where they're like oh look I'm gonna turn an apple into an orange and they stretch mm, a stupid yeah. balloon over it you know yeah. <laughs> stuff like that but it's just drawing more attention to the art form so there's no <clears> real <throat> downside yeah I agree. Yeah, I think I think what I've been struggling with, well, not struggling, the thing that I've been doing is just trying to find ways to make that short form content that I enjoy that's a little more my style rather than what I see a lot of that I don't enjoy watching personally is like the same bought trick that just, you know, you can see a hundred versions of that gimmick just performed. 
mm-hmm. because they need to pump out content. But um, ah, the watch this gimmick that was <laughs> yeah, like that's a good crap. example. That but was everywhere. But there's now like some really creative work, like Richard Sanders. We were saying like Jason, like Doug. You know, Doug um, and I have a very similar style, but I feel like uh, I feel like you should make uh, short forms, Eric, because you've got <clears> that <throat> personality, that winning personality, yeah. jokes, baby. Well, you know, content. You know what, I just saw I the other night. I, I have trouble. I, just recently, I've always been able to sleep amazing, uh, no problem. And just recently, I just get up at 5 a.m. every day. It takes me a couple hours to go back to bed. Oh, anyways, all this to say, um, I stumbled upon uh, Dom Chambers. Mm, Dom, yeah, yeah. yeah, from Australia. From, from yeah. Melbourne, yeah. So good, man. Yeah. All his videos are so good. They're short yeah, he form. Is, he is funny, funny so. clever, original, um, mm. uh, uh, ethical. And just so, how, how is his rap like? Right, where you guys are from? I mean, he's from your your oh, town. He's, yeah, yeah, like he's respected. E- yeah. E- even right, though right. he's, um, you know, yeah, he just did uh the Adelaide Fringe Festival. Did America's Got Talent as well? Yeah, I yeah, know. yeah. He did Fool Us and America's Got Talent over there, and then came back here to keep keep touring. I, I, he was in The Illusionist on Broadway as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, he's, yeah, a, so he's a machine. He's only twenty six, yeah. I believe. Huge fan. Well, I'm, th- I'm, th- I'm thinking of starting in t- another project three sixty five next month. One video. Okay. I'm announcing it, I'm announcing it right now, uh, officially. All right, let's get the official official clip here. <laughs> no, I'm not. There's no fucking <laughs> thing. I thought it was like one video <laughs> a month. <clears throat> one short form content a day for 365 days. Yeah, then it only has to be 30 seconds long. Imagine. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I've, and you know, there's a little bit of like, I've already done it, and a little bit of... Uh, Mika, could you clip that part where he said he's announcing it now? <laughs> yeah. I'm sure we can edit this constructively in a way where he <laughs> yeah. is announcing it to the world. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, but, uh, yeah, I, I, it's intimidating. It's intimidating nowadays, too, with, like, all the pros and all the good stuff mm. that's out there. It's hard not to, like... And, and, and Doug, I feel like you, you just... Do you go by trick? You're like, do you know what you're doing tomorrow? Nope. No. The video just, I shot today, I had no idea I was going to post today. You just I, go with your magic room? Pretty much. I do have a to-do list <clears> that I could open up. You know, I, I have a list of tricks I think would work on the platform. So if I'm ever having a lull or don't know what I want to do, I'll go look through that list. But I think maybe the things I enjoy the most are like today. I got inspired this morning, wrote a little script, worked out the sequences, got this, you know, and... uh yeah, yeah that's, just, that's the same for me. The spontaneity of it is what makes it fun. Yeah, I mean, I think the thing that would, would kill with Eric is like if you were just showing some of those improv moments that happen in your shows. Like, I think that's even, what people will freaking love. You know, even the shit you love. were doing in this podcast where you were doing your jokes with the cup. I mean, just yeah. even that as a short form piece of content is great. That would be... Mm-hmm. That would, are you active online right now, views. Eric? What's that? Are you active on social media currently? Are you doing videos of any kind on a regular basis? Yeah. No, I, does it I, interest you at all? I mean, yeah, I have time. <laughs> I have, I have the props. I have, okay, the props. I, I have to ask because I, I was listening to the podcast when I was trying to get back in. You have a cannabis company, which certainly interests me, and maybe not the focus of this podcast. But does that oh, yeah. become a time suck for you, or is, is uh, it? Is that yeah. the majority? I mean, yeah. we're five, we're five people running it right now, and it's about to blow up. Like it's a, it's really it's going to be huge. And uh, I'm passionate about it. It's the first time I've had a real job. It's the first time I drive to work every day. Yeah. Um, uh, and it's very inspiring to see, you know, something come from, from nothing. We started this from the ground up. Um, that's so cool. But I yeah, yeah. Only cough, only fans. Yeah, that's not, that's not pretty. Uh, I, I, I hope I have an open door invitation to visit your facility when I'm in Canada. And if I do, true. I'm coming to Canada as soon as possible. And I might be coming to New Orleans soon. So I'm going to come see your magic room. Hey, that open door works both ways. So yes. I love it. Well, before we wrap up, thank you for coming on the podcast, Eric. Thank it was you for fun. Finally, yeah. uh, making it on. Um, any last wise words you want to leave the, uh, the magic community with? Well, yeah, I mean, you know, like I said, I think we touched a little bit upon it, but you know, the biggest thing that people always ask on the forums is like, what do you do if somebody wants to examine your deck or what do you, what do you do about hecklers or people want to Google your tricks? And that's the biggest, biggest thing that new magicians or even, you know, seasoned magicians have trouble with. And I, I, you know, and hardly ever, 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 ever get 
questioned or, or heckled or uh, let me examine that or whatever. So my advice is an age old device that if they like you, they'll like what you do. If they like, you got to work on your soft skills. You got to, you're not a wizard. Nobody thinks you're doing magic. And if you come out that way, you're going to rub people the wrong way. And they're just going to, they're not going to like you. You know, when you walk up to a table and with a, at a restaurant, there's a, a guy and his girlfriend talking and, and you go and you perform for the girl. Like that's who does that. So it's, it's being a normal person, being a human before being a, a magician and if like connect with people and work on your soft skills, man. And if they like you, they'll like what you do. If it's the best. So there you have it, Josh. You there gotta you have it. You gotta be a normal you person. Gotta, Josh, it's time for you to take Eric's advice <laughs> and stop hitting on all the bitches. That's it. That's it. <laughs> Thanks for listening. It's time for us to disappear now. Disappear now. But we'll see you again on the next episode of the Magic Guys.